Hello and welcome to Languagecraft for a brand new episode of Let's Time Lapse. Now we're back with episode 16, first episode of 2015. I know it's been a long wait because of Christmas and the new year and play and build, the huge build contest uh, that I hosted that resulted in four recent cinematics on the channel. I hope you did check them out. But anyway, in 2015 we're going to get back into it and finish this season in the next coming months. We're starting with a few houses that we built since the last episode, including the one that I wanted to do for a long time. And it's uh, part of the concept of the village is that it's alive, it's evolving. And I wanted to build this house that was under construction. Uh, most likely, I'll also include a house that is burned up or demolished. Now today we're going to build the Trade Harbor, which will be very different from the fishing port we built a few episodes ago. This one is right in the heart of the village, and as you can see, we drew a lot of lines to help us while we build. So who is this we I keep talking about? Well, you know that I invite someone for each episode. Well, today it's Bed Porsche. He's one of Languagecraft's architects. Oh, wait, just, I wanted to point that out. Every time I see that bit of the video, it reminds me of Sauron's Tower. I, from Lord of the Rings. It just made me laugh and I wanted to share it with you. Anyway, Bed Porsche is a big fan of organics, uh, you know, those kind of 3D pixel arts. Uh, he probably won't be making any of those on this map uh, because I want it to stay historically accurate and he would probably go off and make a dragon or something. But he's a great builder and I'm really glad he was able to come in and accompany me. Now this first shot required all of our building skills to um, hand terraform? Anyway, terraforming with plugins doesn't often look good on camera, so we did all of it by hand, to enable boats to dock in the harbor. Two blocks deep wasn't enough. I asked the builder who will come and make the boats with me, and he said we needed three, four, five blocks, so that's what we went with. So this is the harbor itself, the pier. We're using a lot of stone brick and cobblestone, but also mossy stone brick and mossy cobblestone. Of course, we're still putting as much detail and relief as usual. Even though some of you don't like that, it's still my, and even more, the village's style. As for its importance, this port isn't very big. You'll see that we only have one big dock like the one that is being built, and a much smaller one will appear towards the end of the video. So I'll say maybe three, four ships can dock, if they're no longer than 30 blocks long. We won't be able to build those beautiful and huge ships that we sometimes see. So the harbor is not incredibly important for trade. It has a market, which is the heart of a village, and even more, it has a commandery, which will create a lot of trade. For this episode, I talked a lot with Oriendo, the history teacher who helps me. And from his point of view, as far as its size goes, this village is similar to one like Dieppe, on the French side of the English Channel. According to historians, a boat would dock there about every three days on average. It was absolutely crushed by bigger harbors such as Arfleur or Le Havre, and in some cases it would even only be a stop for ships on their way to the big harbors. So we won't be building a huge port like the Minecraft reproductions of King's Landing, nothing like that. <laughs> some items will be imported for the village, and a couple will be exported, such as wheat, maybe fish, and definitely wine. So the dry dock that we're building may come as a surprise in such a small harbor. It's not a shipyard, but simply a place to repair a damaged ship, not to build them. I wasn't planning on building one, since to me they were only present in bigger harbors, but apparently even small ports had one, just in case a ship needed repairs to finish its journey. Next to it, at the end of the harbor, is a very small building. I wanted it in a corner, because that's where the receiver works. The receiver represents the commandery. He's here to make sure that the sheriff or the lord don't alter trade manifests to keep part of the cargo for themselves. He's there to defend the commandery's interests. So he's tolerated because the commandery is so important to trade uh, in the town, but the authorities don't really like having this religious presence looking over their shoulder. That's why it's at the end of the harbor. Now we're finishing up cranes and such, and we're about to move to the warehouse. It's fairly similar to the one we built for the fishing port, but the terrace is a nice touch, and it wasn't planned at all while we were doing our layout, it just naturally appeared when we started building up the walls. There are many different entrances because we figured people won't want to access it from many different directions, and there is even one directly onto the stone dock. 
In the last episode, I launched a sort of a contest, which was, why did the Pope really send out crusades to the Holy Land? So a lot of people gave me the well-known reason, which is that they simply had to go get rid of the infidels, or they wanted to go pillage stuff. And then one person gave me the answer which I was waiting for, which was simply that the Pope wanted to get the knights out of Europe. The problem is, when you have a lot of knights and military that are just hanging around, they start fighting. And you had all these fights uh, between countries that respected the church, that were uh, Christians and Catholics. And that's not good for the Pope. So he thought, okay, I'll keep them busy. I'll send them all on a quest together. They'll stop fighting uh, amongst each other and they'll just fight for the church. It worked fairly well, but then you have stories like King Richard I was the Lionheart. He's really well known. And he was captured by the French and sold, I think, to his cousin or uncle or something back in England. I don't remember the stories. It, uh, I mean, I watched TV shows about it when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, they didn't really get along very well. But it did the trick. They, most of them fought in Jerusalem instead of amongst each other. Anyway, so the person who gave the right answer, I'll be sending you a Steam key for a game of your choice. And for the others, I might do some kind of contest like this again. Now you might notice that the lighting has changed and the previous shot was cut short. There's also a building that popped up behind the warehouse. The fact is, these time lapses take hundreds of gigabytes of data, and I ran out of room. Not very professional. I didn't notice it until about 20 minutes later, and we decided to keep going anyway, but it's really too bad. The shot was really cool and was made to narrowly miss the crane that we built at the beginning and, you know, just stop right in front of it. Anyway, the building that we missed was for the manager, or commissary, who deals with all the harbor activity for the sheriff. Among other things, he perceived a tax, of which a small part went to the local religious figure, and the rest went to the local lord. Now currently, we're building something completely different. A new inn. I think the sailors need their own tavern and we wanted something that stood out. You might have noticed that we built one house first, and then the second one. To show the town's evolution, we imagined that two independent houses were bought out and assembled to form the inn. The bridge between the two has a balcony, a large entrance, and a smaller one for a downstairs brothel. Bed had that idea, and it seemed completely apt for the Middle Ages. We also added a mast with a sail and a flag on top, it's a crazy idea, but I wanted to add something special. Special features to give more personality to the village, and this way the sailors show their love of the sea. Between the two sandbanks, we're building a dam to stop the waves from hitting the harbor straight on. We left enough room for the boats to dock on either side. On the bottom right, we thought we could add a shipwreck, but we had the idea too late, so we might do it properly later on, during the boat building episode. So I added a smaller wooden dock so that longer ships could dock alongside the whole pier, while Bed built a small rowboat for the person who will have to take care of the fires on the dam. And of course, the first thing we notice are the squids. They were an absolute pain, but someone gave me the game rule to stop them spawning for the next episode, so that won't be a problem. The shipwreck doesn't look very good for the moment, but we will have time to improve it. But here we move on to the harbor itself. When I showed someone a screenshot of the work in progress, they said that the level kept getting better. Thank God, I say. <laughs> there would be a problem if it went backwards. But I think that it comes from the fact that there are more and more collaborations. And there's more and more variety in the town. Each area has its own personality, so that the global result shows off great teamwork. In a few episodes, ships will come and dock here, and on the right you can see the commissary, which is like any other house except that it has an outside staircase. In any case, you'll be able to inspect everything when you download the map at the end of the season. Now there are puddles here and there on the dock. They were done with World Edit. I don't know the command, but Bed did them, and it shows how great a tool World Edit is. It's not just for copying and pasting. This is the view of the whole harbor, with the lighthouse on the other side of the delta, and in total, three small fires to help ships steer into the two harbors. You can see just how messy the docks are, which gives it a lot of atmosphere. 
From the map view you can see blotches and spots all over the place, which is much more varied than the roofs of the houses, which take the same recipe over and over again. And in the next episode, we'll start tackling a very big structure. I'm sure you can guess which one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.